Let's talk about the Bejeweled eyeshadow palette from Bella Peep Bar and some of their new holographic special holiday themed single eyeshadows. So let's take a peek at the inside color story. The pans are not removable. They're not magnetic in case you were wondering and you wanted to build some BYOPs with some of these shades. We have a very holiday themed color story. Tons and tons of jewel tones as the name suggests. So between the mattes and the shimmers as well, this is for sure going to give you some deeper looks. Some of the shimmers are a little bit more topper like and some of them are darker and you'll see that in the swatches. So let's talk about the singles. Now these are not multi-chromes. These are just regular kind of shimmer shadows that have lots of hollow throughout them. So you will really be able to see that effect in direct lighting, in the sunlight, etc. And you might see a little hints of it, like depending on the lighting again. But if you're in undercast lighting, you probably will not really be able to see them. There is one shade right here that is a true, true hollow, meaning it will look very silver on the eyes. Usually holographic pigment tend to just have a silvery look and when there's a lot of it mixed into an eyeshadow it will make it look a little bit more gray. This is literally a true holographic kind of eyeshadow and you have a nice assortment of wintry colors, a really beautiful jeweled red, purple, green, very stunning, true bright 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 gold and then also like a really nice kind of wintry snowy uh, light blue and then the true hollow. So I will not be featuring these in this video like I will not be using them in the look but I am showing you just swatches of these so you can see how they look but stay tuned because I do plan on predominantly doing content for Instagram with those from my reels so definitely make sure you're following me on Instagram and I did receive both the palette and the single eyeshadows from Bella Butte Bar so thank you so much for sending them over to me so I could film with these and get a video up before the launch and I do also have an affiliate code with Bella Butte Bar and I'll put it up on the screen in case you're interested and if you do use my code thank you so much for supporting me and my channel and these single eyeshadows are launching the 17th of November at 12 p.m. Eastern time. I do not have the pricing yet, but I will update the description box and also leave a pinned comment once I do have that information. So first, I'm going to show you some swatch comparisons to some of the multi-chrome shades that are in the Bejeweled palette, and then I will be creating these two looks that you actually see right here, and then I'll give you some of my thoughts at the end of the video, so let's get right into it. Going into Cherry Opal, right onto the inner lid and a little bit into the crease. There are no lighter shades in here to really blend out. So these are all jewel tones. Of course, you could go into another palette if you wanted to, but I'm just going to work with whatever pigment might be left and just help that blend up and essentially kind of sheer it out to almost give the effect as if I am using, in fact, a lighter shadow. And just going to go in with a little bit more. Unfortunately, there's a little bit of sparkle on my blending brush, per usual. And then I think next to that, I'm gonna go in with pink tourmaline. And it's just gonna go right in the center on my lid, right next to the red. And then I'm gonna take another brush and I'm going in with Lapis Lazuli, and that's gonna go into this outer portion of my lid. And I'm just gonna go in with a little bit more over here, and then bring it underneath my lower lash line, but not all the way. And then I'm gonna go back in with the other brush and a little bit of the pink tourmaline just to kind of help bridge these together a little bit more and add in more and these are just going to kind of mix to create a purple like a different tone purple so i think i'm pretty happy with that i'm just going to go back in here and blend a little bit more 
And then of course I gotta deepen it up. So I'm going in with Tanzanite. And I'm just gonna use that out here. Really hoping for minimal fallout. And just to kind of tapping it out here. I did use this shade and the Lapis Lazuli shade yesterday for a real. And I used one of the hollow single shadows, so stay tuned for that. Oh, look at that depth. Yes. So good. I'm going to go back in with this brush that I had for the blue. I have a little bit of fallout here. I did set my entire face just to hopefully be able to blend that away. And then just taking a little bit more. Sometimes I miss the outer corner here when I have lashes already on. That is so stunning. So I really want to go in with Blue Sapphire and Star Ruby together. The moment I swatched those... I knew that they need to be paired together. Picked up Blue Sapphire and I did miss my brush just a little bit. And oh yes, that is stunning. I'm gonna put that out here. Oh, that is so beautiful. It is like glowing. Do you see this? <laughs> oh my God, that is stunning. I'm just gonna put it underneath a little bit too. We're just, we're just all shimmers going all shimmer out. I'm going to flip the brush over to the clean side and I'm picking up Star Ruby and I'm going to mist it just a little bit with water and it's going to go right in here. I feel like I might need to use my finger for this one. No, okay, here we go. And they're going to kind of mix a little bit in here. Actually, I'm going to go in with my finger. Here's what that looks like. Ooh. And I'm just going to tap it on. Oh my god. <laughs> I love this so much. I feel like I want them to merge a little bit more here. So I'm just going to go in with... Just want them to mix together, creating a transition. Alright, let's see if I can brush off this excess. Going in with a clean brush and a little bit of setting powder. I'm just going to go over the edges of the whole look. And I really wanna make sure this shimmer is really nicely smudged out here. There's no harsh line. It just seamlessly blends into the matte. I love this look so much. I would like to wear this all of December. Thank you very much. Here's the finished look. Not quite sure how to follow a look like this, but we'll try. So I think I want to dip into the purple tones, maybe a little bit of green. I think I'm actually just going to do like similar what I did here, but on the other eye with different shades slightly. I think I want Appetite. Agatite? Is that a G or a P? Appetite? I, I think it's Appetite. I'm going to pop that right into the crease. And that is so pigmented. Again, I'm just focusing it first on the lid. And then once I have majority of the pigment that was picked up on the lid, I'm just going to wipe off my brush and blend up whatever is on my lid. So that way it just diffuses it. Since I don't have a lighter shade to blend out with, I'm going to go in with just a tiny bit more. These feel a little bit more powdery, I feel like, than usual for... Uh, Bella Butte Bar, I did notice that, even with the um, blue shades out here. So then, I think next to that, I'm going to go in with Amethyst. Same brush, just wiped it off. I'm going to go in with the, actually, I should have went in with the blue. I should have went with the blue. Oh, well, it's fine. I'm going to take this out here, and then I'm just going to go back in with a little bit of Appetite, Agatite, I can't read the font. It's a little hard to read. As much as I love like fancy fonts and cursive fonts and I think they look nice and they match the themes a lot of times, I do feel like for the purpose of just legibility, they're a little bit hard, especially when they're labeling the shadows like on the cover where the font is nice and large. I'm taking Charoit, Charoit, not sure how to pronounce it. I'm just gonna pop that onto this outer corner. And I'm going to connect my little lash line a little bit as well. And then I'm going to go into the other one brush. And I'm just going to feather this out. And ooh, that is so much depth. 
I'm definitely going to go in with a clean brush on the edges of everything. Um, since I do not have that lighter shade, I just definitely feel like I need a little bit of that diffusion. And then I'm going to go back in. I'm going to go back in with a little bit of Egotite. And then wipe that off and take Amethyst, like the tiniest dab into the pan. And just going back out here. It's just super, super, super pigmented as you can see. So it's just a little bit of kind of finessing. Really need to, I really need to clean my brushes. I have like nothing. Okay, I'm gonna take Red Obsidian. So pretty. I'm gonna mist my brush a little bit just to help avoid fallout hopefully. Just kind of smooth it out. And it's gonna go right out here. And again, I'm gonna bring it really onto the outer corner. Like we're smoothing this out. We're gonna have the shimmer all the way out here and then I'm going to bring it down a little bit as well with a different brush misting with just some water and bringing it underneath my lower lash line and that is so shiny so beautiful and I'm going to take Amazonite and again mist my brush this one is so bright look at that and it's going to be in really nice contrast to this other shade that is much darker oh so pretty Okay, I really like both of these looks. I'm gonna go in with my pinky just to see if I can kind of level it up even more. Oh yeah, definitely foiled it quite a bit going in with my finger. And I'm actually gonna do the same with the red obsidian shade. Just to kind of bring it back in here. I do have some fallout. So I'm just gonna, again, flick it up. And that's pretty good. And here's the finished look. There's no inner corner highlight. Actually, I'm gonna go into the Oracle palette, which I did finally decide I'm going to purchase it. I've just heard so many people raving about it and also people asking me um, to compare it to colorful highlighters. So that video is coming. And I am wearing the shade, the star, I believe, on my cheeks in this video. So let's see, I think, I think the lovers would be great for the inner corner highlight on this eye. And then on the other eye, definitely think the green. So High Priestess, I'm just taking it on my pinky. Oh my, oh my. <laughs> I picked up way too much. Anyways, you can see how pigmented these are. Here's a second finished look. I'm just going to quickly touch on these single shadows. These are hand pressed and the palettes, shimmers and mattes are not. So these are their unique formula. I have tried a few of their single eyeshadows that are hand pressed. So these do feel pretty flaky to the touch. They have a little bit of like a emollient feeling to them at the same time as well. And they do smooth out. So I feel like these might be probably best applied with a finger because of that pressure of your finger will really help to smooth these out when they're going on the lid. And because of that also they are a little messy. So if you do plan on using a brush, definitely do your eye look before your base. Now these are hollow, but these are not shifty. So these are not multi-chrome. So I'm going to assume that means the price is probably going to reflect the fact. I think these will be great for some really poppy holiday party kind of looks. I will definitely be featuring these kind of throughout the next month or two in some reels. I already filmed a reel with the lighter blue hollow and it was spectacular. So I can't wait to use the other shades. So let's talk about the Bejeweled palette. I love the color story. I love me a jeweled, predominantly jeweled kind of color story. I just love deepening up shades for the most part. So I don't really miss having some pastels or lighter tones to blend out. I can really just work with this palette. That being said, I do not have a problem with just dipping it to another palette if I really, really wanted to go in with something to help blend these out, which I do feel like some of them are very kind of powdery and they're super, 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 super pigmented, which I feel like these mattes feel a little bit different for me from the other palettes that I have tried and I've tried at least like five palettes, I think it is, from Bella Bubar now. And I feel like these are a little bit different. I'm not sure if it's because of the kind of tones that are in here and the colors. That being said, I had no issues with layering the mattes and blending them out. They're just really, really pigmented, so be prepared for that when you dip your brush in. Of course, I didn't use all the mattes. I didn't use this one right here, this one, and this one. Honestly, I could have done at least three more looks with this palette. Unfortunately, I just do not have time. The shimmers in here are per usual, spectacular, per Bella B bar standard. I mean, they're just so shiny, shifty, sparkly. There's really so much to choose from. There's a couple of different textures that you can really see in the pan. So the smoothest shades are for sure Star Ruby, Alexandrite, 
blue sapphire and emerald i would say those are like the smoothest and they kind of look the smoothest they're going to give you lots of shine but not necessarily sparkle then red obsidian kunzite emetrite opal and amazonite are more like a more kind of slightly not really texture they smooth out really beautifully but when you kind of touch them they have a little bit of extra oomph to them and some of them have a little bit of translucency so they're not necessarily black based multichromes like alexandrite and blue sapphire i wouldn't say blue sapphire is quite a black based multichrome because it does not really have a base it's just really really jeweled and rich and it is so so beautiful I love both the looks I came up with. I really think this is a beautiful, high quality holiday launch from Bell Beauty Bar. I love to see it. There is one shade down here, Phantom Quartz. It's not quite a satin. It's not quite a matte. It has almost kind of like a creamy formula with lots of sparkles in it. So I'm not really a huge fan of those kinds of shades, but it does look nice in here because of the sparkle. So I understand why it's in here, but I would probably just use it as like a further deepening up shade. It's not quite fully black. It's almost like a grayish dark black if that makes sense if you have a lot of multi-chrome single eyeshadows or palettes with some single eyeshadows you might have some of these shades already especially like alexandra blue sapphire though i feel like blue sapphire kind of stands out a bit because it is just so so vibrant and then emerald and amazonite like i think you might already have some of these red obsidian as you could see in the swatch comparisons i definitely already have this shade specifically in two other palettes it is just so shiny by far one of the shiniest versions of this kind of multi-chrome i have seen absolutely beautiful and i loved it in the second look it is so so shifty i'm just walking around and it's just changing constantly and it's so fun to watch so those are my thoughts on the palette let me know in the comments below if you're thinking about it do you plan on picking it up of course please only buy things that you feel like will add to your collection will add something to you creatively or something that you would see yourself wearing if you are not really into deeper matte or deeper tones like this then i would advise not to spend the money on it just purely because of that and that's everything for this video if you enjoyed the video or you found it helpful don't forget to give it a thumbs up and thank you so much for watching i hope to see you next time